Hey guys, how's it going? Tristan Parker here and I've got a super quick video for you today. Today we are talking about Z-indexing. Now if you're familiar with web design and CSS, you probably know what Z-indexing is. But if you're not, Z-index can be quite confusing and it took me a little while to figure out what Z-index really was. But once I did figure it out, it was a complete game changer for the way that I was able to produce really stunning visual website compositions. So hopefully today, once you get to the end of this video, you're gonna have a much better understanding of Z-indexing and more importantly, how Z-indexing works with Elementor. Now, before I jump onto the computer and run you through this step by step, I just wanted to say that over 90% of you who are watching my videos have not yet subscribed. So if that is you and you are enjoying this content, please do hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Also hit the bell notification and you're gonna be notified of all of my future releases. Now, there are loads of videos on this channel as well, which are designed to help you up your website design game and improve your business. So please do go check those out because you're gonna find those super beneficial as well. So I'm gonna need the computer to show you how Z-Index really works within a live website. So let's jump onto that now. So Z-Indexing essentially is similar to your website design and how you start layering up your visual composition. Now our standard, all elements within your website have a Z-Index of zero. So the way the hierarchy works is if we look at our navigator here, this, this section is going to have a Z-Index of zero. Also, this section is gonna have a Z-index of zero. Because this section is underneath the section above, this section will have a more authoritative Z-index than the one above. So this basically means that these are layering up. Now you can't see that because the design is flat, but if we were to sort of like flip it on its side, this container would be slightly more in front than this one here. Now I'll get into more detail as to how that would look in a second. Now, depending on how you're designing your website, you might encounter different issues when it comes to Z-indexing. And the most common one comes with your header when you start trying to lay a header on top of your hero section like so. Now, off the bat, this probably looks okay. I mean, our navigation is coming through, but where the problem lies is where we don't actually have our logo. Now, as you can see, we are in Elementor, which is great. Now we just need to access the template of this header here. So we're going to swap over to that now. As you can see, we've got our header here. We've got a navigation. Now you can't see it because everything is white because we want it to sit on top of our uh, dark background. So our text is white and we've got this blue bar underneath. Now you can see over on the left hand side, we actually do have a logo here. It is white, but we can't see it on our page. Now there is a really easy fix to this. We just come up to our header, click the six dots and we need to change the Z-indexing authority on the entire header. So we head over to advanced and we come down to our Z-index. Now by default, Z-index is set at zero. So if you set a Z-index of one, that is always going to be more authoritative than those of zero. Now remember, the standard Z-index is zero. So if you apply a Z-index of one, then that's gonna be more authoritative than any other default element on the page. So that's gonna sit in front. So if I just save that now, and if we come back to our header and just hit refresh, awesome. You'll now see that our logo is coming through and our entire header bar, our header section, header container, whatever you'd like to call it, is now more authoritative than the container that's sitting in the background, which is perfect. So just to demonstrate the hierarchy of importance when it comes to Z-indexing, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select this section, this entire section that's sitting in the background of our header like so. And we're gonna to go to advanced and I'm gonna give this a Z index of two, like so. So you'll see that our header has disappeared. Now this is because our header has a Z index of one and our section has a Z index of two. Now the two is more important than the one. So that is gonna then sit in front of our header because the header has a Z index of one, okay? So you can kind of see how you can start layering up website compositions just based on Z index. So I'm gonna return that to zero now and you'll see that the header comes back. I'm just gonna update our changes here. Now that we've covered the most common area where you might require Z-index and that being the header, we're now gonna talk about how you might use Z-indexing in your website composition or anywhere further down the page within your website design. So let's take this, these two containers for example. So remember, we've got this container here. This is gonna have a Z-index of zero by default and this Z-index is also going to be zero. But because this section comes after the section above, it has a stronger importance than the one above. So if I select this container, we're gonna to go to advanced. 
So what I want to do is start adding a negative margin and I want to bring this container up to sit on top of this one like so. Now you'll see that all of the content in the container above is disappearing and this one is overriding it and basically sitting on top and that is because this has a more important uh, default Z index than the element above it. So if we continue dragging that up, you might think that that looks a little bit weird. But what we can do is we can change the Z index on this image and we can have it sit on top of this element here. So you might be thinking that a solution would be to add a Z index to this entire container to bring it in front of the one below. Now, if I show you what that would look like, so we've got this section, um, we've got this section selected at the top. If we go to Z index and we add that as a Z index of one. What that's gonna do is it's gonna bring this container to sit in front of the one below. So that works, but the effect I'm trying to achieve here is to have the image alone to sit on top of the container that comes underneath. So what we want to do is we can either add a Z index to the inner container that we've got here, or we could add a Z index to the image alone. So what I'm gonna do in this instance is show you with just the image. So if we select the image to edit, Go to advanced, again down to Z index, and we're just going to apply that as a Z index of one. And there you go, that is now sitting on top of our section underneath. So you can see how this is layering. So just to recap, what's actually happening here is the section underneath has more importance than the one above. So when we change the uh, negative margin to, to bring that container up, it's overwriting the content. And what we're saying is, I want the image to come forward in terms of layering. So we change the Z index and apply that to one. So hopefully you can understand how you can start layering things up based on just Z index alone and how you can start making these really nice overlapping sections within your website composition. So remember guys, Z index is actually really similar to the layering system that works in the likes of Photoshop or Adobe XD. So there you go guys, that was Z indexing in a nutshell and hopefully you found that really useful and now you're gonna be able to understand how you can start layering up your website components to start making some really nice visual compositions within your website design practice. Now, if you do wanna share any of your websites with me, just drop them down in the comments. Likewise, if you've got any questions, please do let me know down in the comments. I love answering your questions. I always love hearing what you guys are working on. So please do drop me a comment down below. Now, before I go, I just wanted to say that I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification as well, and you're gonna be notified for those future releases. There are also loads of other videos on this channel, so please do go check those out as well. Now, that's it for now, guys, and I will see you in the next video.